Hey guys, so today I'm going to do my second half series 5 overview. If you've seen the first one, this is basically just where I take the first, well the last one I took the first half of the series and give my thoughts and this one is obviously going to be the second half of the series. Now I was going to wait till next week which is obviously um, Saturday's the second last episode. Actually I'm probably posting this video on Saturday so essentially today would be the second last episode. But since it's a two-parter, I'm going to class that as one big finale episode and just do this from Amy's Choice to the Lodger, which is episodes 7 to 11. So, obviously, Amy's Choice. I absolutely love Amy's Choice. First of all, it's always great when a Doctor Who episode has your name in the title. Um, so, basically, this is the with the Dream Lord and they wake up in this like village and then they wake up in the TARDIS and then they fall asleep again and they wake up in the village and they have to work out whether the village is the real world or the TARDIS is the real world. Um, I don't want to... Okay, warning, this video may contain a few spoilers if you've not seen the um, episodes yet. So, um, go away just now and come back soon if you want to watch them first. So, I thought it was pretty obvious to begin with. Well, in general, I thought it was really obvious. Because, of course, the TARDIS is going to be the real world because the TARDIS isn't fake. Whereas this village, they've never seen this village before. But the TARDIS, the, the TARDIS has to be real because they've been in it their whole life, well the Doctor has. So, I thought that was kind of... Obviously Doctor Who can take you in any direction, it could have been a twist, um, for all we know something else could have happened. But the way I was thinking it seemed kind of straightforward and it all panned out the way I was thinking too. So that's fine. But there were a few nice sort of twists and surprises and things along the way. So it was a really good episode. I mean, I, I did love it. I thoroughly enjoyed every moment of it. I was like, oh my god, what's going to happen next? Um, even though I had ideas and pretty much all of them did follow through, it was sort of like I wasn't expecting that at the same time. So it was really quite weird. So that was fantastic. And then we have Hungry Earth and Cold Blood, which is obviously the combined one, where they were supposed to go to Rio and they don't. Um, they end up in Wales. So they are faced with the um, Homo Reptalia, who live underground. And this big, like, well, I say this big company, it was just a few of them drilling underground. And they disturb the Homo Reptalia. And they're like, oh, well, we're going to come and, you know, um, we're, what am I trying to say? They're, go they're going to come and, they used to be residents of the Earth. I have to explain that before I carry on if you haven't seen it. The Homo Reptalia used to um, inhabit Earth. Um, and then they moved underground. And so they think the humans are disturbing them. Whereas when the Homo Reptilia try to take over the planet again, the humans think the Homo Reptilia are taking over them. So that was a really nice two-parter. I don't think it should have been two parts, you know, because there are certain episodes where you know should have been two parts. I'm trying to think. Um, obviously, um, Doomsday should have been two parts. Um, the Satan Pit was two. Um, Army of Steel. All the, okay, they're all season two episodes. But all these are ones where I thought, yes, this has to be two episodes. I love it. I don't think um, Hungry Earth Cold Blood should have been two episodes. I think they could have resolved the problem within the 45 minutes. Maybe they were short of ideas, maybe they thought it was really good for two parts. But I personally don't think it was worthy of an hour and a half. But never mind, it was still really good. Um, not my favourite episode. Not a lot of the scenes have stuck in my head. I'm going to have to go back and watch them both. Just to sort of, you know, connect with it a bit more. Um, I did like it. Of course I did. But it just wasn't perfect and there were there weren't faults with it but it wasn't perfect it was just an episode that I liked um not one that I'm going to obsess over like I do with some so that is that one um, and then we have Vincent and the Doctor which I love um I love any of the episodes where it's sort of we go back in time like the Shakespeare code and things where it's sort of we're back in time but we're on earth and it's very historical and very lovely I'm trying to think of others like that um Unicorn and the Wasp, that sort of thing. And and I know nothing about Vincent van Gogh. Very little about him. What I, what I know is your sort of basic knowledge. So it was really nice to learn more about him. And I think the episode itself was so lovely. His character was so, so amazing. Definitely sort of looked at the show in a new way. Um, and the monster, the invisible thing, did it even have a name? I'm trying to think. I don't think it did, did it? Maybe it did, but I can't remember. The Invisible Creature, I thought it was so, so lovely, well done. The way at the end of it, it was just like it wasn't a monster. It was just an alien that couldn't see and it was scared. And it was so beautiful the way it, the way it finished. So that was really, really nice. I loved the episode completely. And then we have The Lodger. 
Now, somebody said to me, you'll be looking forward to the episode because James Corden's in it. And I'm like, well, no, I'm not a fan of James Corden. I don't dislike him. I'm just not really a fan, if that makes sense. So I was like, well, no, I, I won't. I don't, I don't, I'm don't. i not really looking forward to it because James Corden, Corden's in it. I'm not a fan. And they were like, oh, well, you won't like it then, will you? And I'm like, well, no, just because I'm not a fan doesn't mean I'm not going to like it. It turns out I absolutely loved it. The idea of not knowing your neighbours or not being able to talk to your neighbours is really weird. There are, I'm trying to think, there's a person who lives like in the door opposite from me because I live in a building and the two people who live upstairs and the one at the very top. So basically, six, six, six houses in the one building, I only know one of my neighbours. That is kind of a creepy thought. Um, okay, I've never heard really weird banging and everything, so I'm assuming that they're not trying to make a temp, uh, replica TARDIS, but yeah, so for all you know, they could be like, that's a really weird thought. So the idea behind it is really simple, but so effective. Um, and then the fact that when when Amy said that she's got the plans, it's a one-story building, I was like, oh my god, that is weird. Um, it didn't really make the story any more disturbing or anything. It was just sort of the way she said it. It was kind of like, uh-uh. So that was really, really good. I loved the episode. The idea behind it, like I said, was fantastic. There are no quotes or anything in it that come to mind. But what I like about it, this reminds me of episodes like The Idiot's Lantern and Fear Her. Um, where, okay, again, they're all Billy Piper episodes. I'm sorry, I've got to get out of this mind frame. But, do you know where you're in a normal street and you visit normal people in present day in their normal homes and their normal lives? And it's really quite a sunny episode and then you have just the alien monster and things. So that is what was really good about it because it reminded me of my favourite episodes. Um... Okay, Fear Her isn't one of my favourite episodes, but it reminded me of that sort of really sunny episodes where you've got normal lives with monsters in it. Don't get me wrong, I love the ones where we're in different planets and things, they're amazing. Um, but just in general, that was really, really good, so I liked that. And that is them all, depressingly. We have two more episodes left, obviously one on Saturday and um, then one the following Saturday, I think. Which, I can't believe it's coming to an end already, and then that means we have to wait a whole year for another Doctor Who. Unless they do a Christmas one, which they will. What an entire year to see Doctor Who again. I don't want that! <laughs> I'm going to start kicking some in a minute. That is so unfair. I just wish it could go on and on, you know, like EastEnders is. It's on all the time. I'm sure it'd be a lot of work for BBC, but it'd be really, really good for us. Um, although there would be a lot more merchandise, which means more money. Okay, maybe, maybe I can stomach the fact that it's on only once every year. But I hope it really hurries up and comes round. Um, I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, I'm happy Matt Smith's staying on as the Doctor. Although, Adam Crosdale would make a really good Doctor. Go and Google him if you're not sure who he, who, uh, if you're not sure who he is. He played Doctor Jenkins in EastEnders. He'd make a fantastic Doctor. But I'm really happy with Matt Smith and Karen Gillan. Fantastic. Um, yes, yeah, so that's all I want to say about the overview. Fantastic. Did I prefer the first half or the second half? I think I preferred the first half, I think. But that's because it had the Daleks in, and the Beast Below was lovely, and yeah. So that's them. This piece of my hair is doing my head in. Okay, yeah, never mind. So that is all I want to say about that. Please feel free to leave comments and things, and let me know your thoughts. Um, I will do a video um, in two weeks' time about the final episode, but I have a few other Doctor Who ones um, in between then. But that's all I want to say about this, so I will see you in my next video. If you have any requests, Doctor Who or otherwise, please ask and I will get around to them. And I will see you next time. Bye guys!